Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your internet shop teacher, and this is episode number 59 of my This and That series. I haven't done one in quite a while, so I have a lot of new things to show you, and I hope some interesting thoughts. Do not confuse this with my vlog, although I'm not sure what the difference is myself, to be honest with you. Well, you know, in the last one, I cut my old pad in half, you know. I was shocked at how many people were shocked at how dangerous that allegedly was. Now there was almost no charge left in that battery. That thing wouldn't hold a charge for two minutes. It was a piece of junk. <clears throat> Although it was ten years old, I, I did like it, but now I've graduated to bigger and better ones. But perhaps you people that think that I live on the dangerous side do not watch AVE if you want to see some uh, crazy, wild, dangerous things. But uh, my thought was, if that little battery in here, I think it's lithium, is that dangerous, how dangerous is a Tesla car with a thousand pounds of lithium batteries in it speeding down the highway at 70 miles an hour? I don't know, I haven't heard of any accidents, but I mean, that's got to be actually a million times more dangerous than this. I'm sorry. Alright, let me show you a few other things. My friend Gary, who is a clockmaker, watch repairman, and former chemist, and a brilliant man at that, remember he loaned these two tools to me that uh, appeared on a recent What Is It series. But uh, he also loaned me this. Well, we all know what this is, but it is unique and it's old, so let's take a look at it. But I didn't want to put, put it on What Is It, because it's obviously a wrench and there's the socket and it's at an angle with a u-joint in here and then down in the end here you can rotate it and turn the socket let me put that back in there like that to reach at something and of course you can put a rod through here to give yourself leverage that's missing but look what's in here Four more sockets. Pretty neat. Not sure why that has a spring-loaded ball. Oh, there's another one in there yet, too. I guess that's it. Pretty neat tool in perfect condition. Let me show you the original advertising. This is a 1918 advertisement in the Hardware Age magazine and that dapper man with a felt hat and a tie is going to do a little repair job so he's tucking that wrench into his pocket. How outrageous is that? So that was called the Belmont Master Wrench, the wrench that spins them off. So here's one of the patent drawings, and look at what they're patenting. Well, there's that ball that I was just talking about, and spring, that's what they patented, not the rest of it. And this is the end cap, if you can read it. Patents are pending. Yeah, they're pending all right. I'm sure Edgar <laughs> Guthard died a broken man, wasting money on his invention, and he was brokenhearted, I'm sure. But that's the patent right there. There might have been other patents too, because you know they try to patent all the different features that are unique. And there's the rod that's missing. Let me know if you enjoy it when I show patents, or am I wasting my time looking these things up? Thank you, Gary, for loaning that tool to me. You know, I often talk about drill stands or drill indexes, whichever you may call them. And some of them are quite old and collectible, although I have none of those, but Adam Booth has a nice collection of the older ones. But let me show you something that Bill Kepler sent to me, and he's in uh, New York. But he just sent pictures. I do, not, I do not have the actual item. This is it. This is a drill index, although it looks more like a cigar humidor, doesn't it? But there's the top of it, and it was 
made by Morse Twist Drill Company, which was a major player years ago in the drill bit business, but that dates to 1908. And there's another picture of it, although that certainly doesn't show up very well, does it? And there's the patent drawing, and I'll put stills of this at the end of this video. This is me, when I'm still in my prime. Look how dark and full my hair is. This is probably in the mid-80s, and I'm at the Chicago Auto Show, and I am talking to the great actor from Mexico, Ricardo Montalban. And this is when Ricardo was working for Chrysler. We're at the Chrysler display, and he often talked about rich Corinthian leather. Do you remember that? I cannot tell you how charming, suave, and debonair and polite that man was. He was just wonderful. We watched him approach the Chrysler booth with an entourage, and two things struck me. One, he is incredibly short, quite a bit shorter than me, and walked with a severe limp, the result of falling off a horse many years ago, but it was so wonderful to meet him. My friend Lee's wife ran the newspaper in La Salle, so we always had press passes to get into the show, and he was taking a lot of pictures. That's why it ended up in the newspaper, because uh, he was standing right behind me, naturally, taking the picture. Now, I would like to draw your attention to the pretty model here who was totally fixated on me. I think she had a crush on me. In a recent video I talked about file handles and I favor the screws on type but have used the other type too where you just jam the tang of the file in there but I complained about them often falling off and somebody said well you fool you gotta heat these up red hot tap it in there and in other words, burn a space for the file tang, then take it out, cool it, and then drive it home for good, and it will not ever slip out. So let's try that. Oh, that really branded it good, didn't it? Now I'll let that cool a minute. All right, it's cooled off. And you can see that it went on a lot farther than originally. So hopefully that's the solution. At the age of 77, I finally know how to do it. I might as well complain about something while I'm doing it here. This is my map torch gets much hotter, you know, than propane, but as I went to use it, the plastic stripped out, and I had to turn it on with a plier, so I'm thinking, what kind of junk, and this is actually pretty old, probably 20 years old, but if you look at some of the older propane type torches, they used a metal knob, it's still in perfect shape, that's die cast, there's another one, and I got a whole drawer from, and then at some point they thought, hey, we can save two cents per unit, Let's use plastic. That's a good idea, and somebody got a big Christmas bonus. I recently got a box from a longtime viewer and a good guy. His name is Ellie Price. I may have mentioned him before, but he gave me three different oilers. Well, one, two of them are oilers, I believe, and one is a air dryer. I'm not too familiar with these. And they are all of the a major brand. What is it here? Thank you, Ellie, for that. Hmm. These are lubricators. And he suggested that I make a video of how these work. But, you know, I really do not know how they work offhand. But thank you for that. It's heavy brass. There are two things you need a lot of in the shop, and they are great luxuries to have. And one is clean rags. And look, at my wife washes these for me, and then she even irons them and folds them neatly. So thank you, Jeanette, for that. She's a big help to me. 
But the other thing that is a luxury is plenty of parallels on the milling machine and you need fat ones and you need thin ones and you need tall ones and you need short ones and you need ones with holes drilled in them. This is homemade. This man clearly liked drilling holes. And then one of my favorite sets is the wavy parallels. These are from Switzerland but all the different heights you've seen me use these before. <coughs> But the waviness allows you to compress them in the vice jaws if these are too thick. So get yourself a set of these. This is a small vice. It's really only a four incher. And many of the parallels that I just showed you are too large. So I was thinking, what kind of parallels could I make or acquire for these that are relatively short and then it dawned on me well I've had this set of square keys for years and years and years but here is a complete set of small parallels in all the different sizes and you might say well those aren't accurate and you're right but how often do you need hardened ground accurate parallels so Consider getting yourself a set of these. Maybe they sell them at uh, the freight store. I don't know. But you got three sixteenths and eighth, and, and you can stack them on top of each other, mix them and match. There's a cheap way of uh, finding parallels for these little vices. I've talked to you endlessly about these old popular mechanics and mechanics illustrated popular science, and there was another one called science and mechanics and they all had these marvelous covers on them some of them of course preposterous but it's the contents that really mattered and look at how thick they were every one featured articles about woodworking machine shop photography and things like that but I went through these years and years ago I had hundreds of these and I, I went through and defaced them and clipped out articles that I thought were interesting and drawings and blueprints and things like that all with plans on making some of these, but you know, the best laid plans of mice and men. But let me show you what I clipped out years ago. Okay, before I get to that, I got to rant here. I really have to rant that nowadays every kid has one of these tablets or a phone or a TV and they play these video games endlessly. It's just horrible. They don't learn anything. I really object to that. But what is even worse, I found out now there are an awful lot of videos out on YouTube that people watch and what they're watching is someone else playing a game. They're too lazy to play the game themselves, they're watching others play the game. Well, I suppose you could say that about me watching baseball or football or something like that, but all right, I got totally sidetracked, but years ago everyone had a hobby. I mean, look at this old guy. Actually, he's probably 20 years younger than me. Look at all the engines that he built over a period of time. Many of the articles just gave you little tips and hints on what to do in the machine shop or the wood shop. All kinds of pictures there. But look at here's a feature article on how to cut a keyway on the shaper. Well we don't even use shapers anymore do we? Using the modern shaper? Yeah that's modern all right. And look at here's a boy making an engine. Imagine that. Not playing a game. They featured new, uh, new materials, new uh, tools that you might want to buy. Cutting threads on the lathe. All the things that we have now on YouTube, of course. And I could go on and on. Gears, projects, engines, and so on. Just a few more if you'll bear with me, how to make springs, how to make micrometer lathe stop, and it goes on and on. And I derive a lot of my ideas and inspiration from looking through some of these old magazines. All right, that's enough on that, I guess, isn't it? Do you remember in a recent video where I put out a plea for help, I said, is there anyone out there that has the blueprints or can tell me where I can get the blueprints for this Atlas gear cutting attachment? And they never produced the actual attachment, but they sold blueprints for it. Well, it wasn't a matter of minutes before someone sent me 
a PDF file with the actual blueprint and after that many many more people made the offer so thank you to all of you. Thank you very much Breck from down in Borg, Louisiana for sending me this blueprint and you can look forward to it or dread it when later in the winter I tackle this project and cut a gear on the Atlas lathe. Well that's about it for now. Stand by if you're interested in small steam engines, model engines, because I'm going to play a clip that I filmed at the Gilmore Car Museum a few months ago. Some of you may find that interesting. Some very nice models. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now and I'll see you next time. Here's a nice little selection of model steam engines. That's a Stuart. You may recognize some of these. There's an empire. I have one of them. One of my favorites.